Hey, in our last video, I showed you how to connect the lav scope to a vehicle. We used the camshaft position sensor on this Toyota. We weren't sure which wire it was, so we just went through the wires until we found a good signal. We were able to see the signal on the screen. We made some adjustments to our settings to where we could get a good picture of that signal. We could zoom out, we could zoom in. Let's go one step further for this next test. Let's use two channels and we're gonna look at something else. On this vehicle, we're gonna look at the ignition coil. Now this is a smart ignition coil. It has the igniter built into the coil. So we do not need to use the attenuators. It's a four wire coil. Now on this particular vehicle, Toyota uses a ignition feedback and ignition trigger. So IGF and IGT. Now it's pretty common to see one of these vehicles with a coil failure. So knowing how to connect to these and what the waveform should look like may be beneficial to you. The feedback signal is gonna be shared across all of the coils. And basically that's just a signal going back to the computer and the coil is saying, yeah, I got your signal and I fired. It sends that signal back even if it doesn't fire sometimes, but it's telling the computer that I got your signal, I started to charge up, we're ready to go. We're gonna take a look at that signal and then the IGT is going to be the trigger from the computer. That's not shared amongst all the coils. That is gonna be an individual wire going to each coil. So we're gonna to connect to one of these coils. We're gonna to connect to both those signals and I'm gonna show you the setting in the lab scope to activate that second channel so we can see both of them at the same time. So I already have the scope powered up. We see the lights are on. I'm still connected with the USB cable to the lab scope. Let's swipe over and go to scope box two. Let's activate our second channel by hitting the channel two button. Now on these signals, I don't know if they're gonna be five volt or 12 volt signals. So I'm gonna be safe and I'm gonna say that they're a 12 volt signal. So we're going to put two volts per division. So we have a total of 20 volts on the screen. We have 10 divisions on the screen. Right now, both of my channels are set to one volt. So I wanna see a smaller waveform. So I'm gonna hit the smaller button on channel one, smaller button on channel two. That's gonna switch them both to two volts per division. Now I have 20 volts for both channels on the screen. Now I actually don't know which wires are which on our ignition coils. So we're gonna, we're gonna play the, the back probe it and guess game. Um, we could take an educated guess and whichever wire color is different between each coil is probably gonna be our trigger wire. And then there's gonna be a couple of wires that are shared. Our power is gonna be shared, our ground is gonna be shared, and our feedback signal is gonna be shared. Now, our ground is normally white on a Toyota. Our power often is black. So more than likely, we're gonna be working with our other two wires, whichever of those may be. Now, pardon the noise, but I am gonna start up the vehicle. So I'll try to make the noise as bearable as possible. I do have the second channel connected on top of the scope. Let's just grab our channel one. I'm gonna back probe into this coil. And it looks like I'm around ground. So that might be our ground wire. I'm not quite sure there. Go to our next wire. And there we have a small square wave. I'm just gonna take a guess and say this is our trigger signal because of the spacing of those. If this was our feedback signal where all of the coils are connected, it's gonna be a little more repetitive or closely spaced pattern. But I could be wrong. Let's take our second channel and we're gonna to go to the next wire. Okay, there's our feedback. So this is gonna give us a chance to explore our trigger function uh, with a little more detail than the last video. Because if I want to trigger on channel one to keep the channel one waveform from jumping around, then I can easily line up with one of those yellow pulses and then we can look at our feedback signal as well. So I'm actually gonna zoom in just a little bit. So at the bottom, we're gonna zoom in. We're gonna take the time that's on the screen and we're gonna shorten it. So we're at 50 milliseconds per division. So times that by 10, that's half a second on the screen. We hit this button, it drops it down to 20 milliseconds. Now we can see that that yellow waveform drifts off the edge of the screen. So let's go ahead and activate our trigger. So our trigger is turned on. We can see that at the top of the screen and it's set to a rising edge. Right now it's defaulted to 3.828 volts, but I wanna lower that down to whatever my voltage is. So I'm gonna use that slider on the right side of the scope. We're gonna slide down 
until we come across our trigger for that ignition coil. Now you can see it almost looks like our waveform quit moving. It's still moving around just a little bit. We can see it dancing around, but it's lining it up every time our trigger goes across that voltage, which I have it set to 2.82 volts. And if I want to move that trigger point left and right, we're gonna drag that diamond at the top of the screen or the top of our uh, scope here. If I move it to the left just a little bit, now we can see that yellow trigger or that yellow waveform happen twice on the screen. So now we know that we have a full rotation of the engine actually two rotations of the engine, because it takes two rotations of the crank to fire the spark plug for the cylinder. So now we can look at the, the timing of that waveform. If we just glance at this, say one of our ignition coils underneath the intake where it's really hard to get to was bad, we could maybe see if we're missing a feedback signal from one of those other coils just by connecting to the coil at the front. By having two channels connected, I can sync off of the one coil that I'm connected to. And if we know the firing order, we can count that across the screen. So I'm connected to cylinder number six. The firing order on this engine is very easy. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know that our first yellow pulse is six. Next is one, two, three, four, five, and then six again. So if I was missing a pulse, it'd be very quick and easy for me to identify exactly which cylinder is having the issue. Now let's go ahead and zoom in on this waveform a little more. So because I'm zoomed in so far, there is a period of time between one trigger and when we see that trigger again. If I trigger on channel two, it would probably uh, line up that channel two marker in the screen and it would say stationary and every once in a while we would get that yellow blip. To change which channel we're triggering on, we can hit the trigger button at the top of the screen, switch to channel two, and let's adjust that trigger to where the channel two crosses. So I have channel two triggering at three volts and that's a falling edge trigger. So what's happening is every time channel two drops down, it lines it up. Now, every once in a while we see that quick yellow flash for channel one. Now the reason that it's not as stable on channel one is because there's a large period of time when channel one isn't displayed on the screen. So it kind of confuses a little bit, but what we can do is if we want to stop the scope on just our trigger for channel one, we can go down to the bottom where it says single trigger and it stops that waveform with that waveform on the screen. So as soon as channel one went across our trigger that we had set up, it stops the capture so that we can analyze it. Let me shut off the vehicle. So from here, we have the, the same options as before. We can measure, use the measurement cursors. We can measure time. If we wanted to find out how long before the computer activates the coil or triggers the coil, do we get that feedback? We can measure that. So let's just uh, put our vertical cursors on the screen. And I'll drag those from when the computer sends our trigger to when the feedback of that ignition coil pulls, pulls that feedback signal down. And that is 692 microseconds. If we wanted to look at the, the dwell time, the on time from the computer, how long does it trigger that coil for before it fires it? We have 3.17 milliseconds. So if you're looking at a vehicle and maybe you have one coil with weak spark or misfire on one cylinder and you are looking at the trigger, if one cylinder has a shorter trigger or that waveform is kind of distorted, you may have a bad computer and it can't control that ignition coil properly. So this is you know, one aspect where having a two channel scope can really benefit you. Um, not all the time are you gonna use two channels. Normally you're just gonna use one channel, but every once in a while you need to add that second channel. There's some times where I wish I had 60 channels so I could hook up to everything on the vehicle and watch it all at once. Um, but normally it's not quite feasible to make all those connections. Two channels is what I use on average for most vehicles. So, you know, this setup here has you pretty well covered for, for most of your testing. 
If you guys are looking for a whole series of videos of different types of tests that you can do, I do have a series that we did a couple years ago called the Automotive Weekly Waveforms. And almost every week, and then we switched to every two weeks, I was putting out a video with a specific test you can do with the lab scope on a vehicle, and then the following week we do a live stream to review those captures. We may bring that back, um, but I need to find, I need to come up with some new tests that we can perform that's easy to perform on most vehicles because I had a couple of them that were, they were kind of rare to find a vehicle that you could perform that test on. Um, so it made, it made it where the interaction in the live stream wasn't quite as good. But if I have time, I'll, I'd like to bring that back this spring. I'll put a link to that playlist down below in case you guys are looking for those videos. So if you have any questions or comments on activating that second channel, operating the lab scope, put those down below. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, other videos, diagnostic videos, lab scopes, scanners, specialty tools, then subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.